segment we're going to look at some more German helmets, but these are the older style German helmets. We have quite a few in the collection and I picked out some very special ones. This first one I'd like to show you is from the late 1700s, made out of metal. Uh, this was very popular in that era. Uh, didn't have to worry about electrical lines coming down on top of you. And it was, uh, these, these helmets were made by a company in Austria. And they made a lot of brass fire helmets. The Germans were, these were very popular in Germany at the time. This one is from the late 1800s. And it's, uh, you'll see this on several of them. Uh, this, this one happens to be an officer's helmet, and you can tell it's an officer's helmet by the rosetta around here on both sides, Not similar to our captains wearing red. This was a, this probably would have been a captain or a lieutenant. And on the front of this thing, it has the insignia of the town, and I'm not sure what town this came from, but it's a lion, and uh, it has the inscription on this, and you'll see this on a few of the other ones. It says, Gott zu er dem Nachtin zwir. And I've asked several of my German fireman friends what that means. And the closest thing they can come to it is, got to go to nearest emergency, or God is watching out for you, or whatever. We have never have been able to find out exactly what the exact meaning of that is. But it's, Gott zu er dem Nachtin zwir. And anybody knows that, you might want to write it in and tell us what that actually means. This is another one from that era. A little fancier, probably a small little fire department. Um, this again was a firefighter's helmet because they, they painted the whole thing black. Has a very nice insignia on the front. The two firemen's axes. This was very popular in Germany at the time. This is from probably 1890s, 1900. And this one is a really unique one. This is from 1880. And this is from Munich, Germany. And a friend of mine in Germany sent this to me. And it's got the Munich insignia on the front, which is indicative of a lot of helmets. They would put the city seal on the front of the fire helmet. And he also sent me this, which was pretty cool. It's a bugle. And in that era, in order to let the people on the fire know that they had something going on, such as evacuate the building, or we have a problem happening, or the fire's out, and we can pick everything up they would have one bugler assigned to the officer in charge and he would blow this bugle a certain tone similar to our military and there was different different tones meant different things different notes meant different things and that's when the people would react to this and it was easier than yelling and screaming on the fire ground and that was uh, I was very pleased to get this this is more of a ceremonial trumpet than an actual trumpet but this is what they used over there All right, again this is a trumpet from Munich and I thought I'd like to hear what they were hearing on the fire ground. You have to remember, I played the trumpet from the fourth grade till I went to fire service in 1963, and I was uh, three years with the U.S. Army band uh, in uh, San Pedro, trained to kill. Hold on. That meant the food was here, or you can go to the bathroom. I'm not sure which. This one is from 1900, and it's very unique because it's got this ball on the top and the insignia in the middle, and this was noted as being a, uh, a chief officer's helmet that he would wear in a parade. He wouldn't necessarily wear this on the fire ground. This was strictly a parade fire helmet. And this one here is from the early 1910-1912 era, and it has it has an insignia on the front of it here, and it says Freiwillig, and Freiwillig means volunteer, and then underneath is Feuerwehr. Feuerwehr is fireman or fire department, and then this is from Essendorf, Germany. And it's from about 1910, 1911, somewhere up in that area. And this one is also a volunteer helmet. It's, here again we have Roy Willig on the top. Uh, this one happens to be Stutzenhof and the word Feuerwehr underneath. But this happens to be an officer's helmet and you can tell the difference between the two because one has much more regalia on it than the other one does. And so this was also from the early 1905, 19 era, something there. This one here 
I know where this came from because I got this. This is one of the first helmets that we ever got in the museum from Germany. And it's from, it was actually used in uh, Berlin, Germany in 1905. And I was very pleased to get this. And here again it has a red band around it which I think meant something to the effect that this was some kind of an officer in a fire company over there. This was, like, I think I paid ten dollars for this for a, from a guy from uh, Belgium. He sold me three helmets. He sold me a French helmet, a German helmet, and an old British helmet. And um, this is a, a kind of a special helmet in the collection, but it, it, he told me that it came from, from Berlin in 1905. And this is a kind of unique helmet. This is, uh, again, from Germany, but it has a totally different kind of a top on it. But it does have the regalia along the sides, which when it was put up there, looking at it from the side could very well have meant that this was an officer. And all these helmets that you're seeing here today are all from the early era of Germany. And you wonder, how could you fight a fire in a helmet like that? Well, they didn't fight fire like we fight fire today. They didn't go in with breathing apparatus on, and most of them, the helmets were more or less an insignia of the fact that they were a firefighter. And so we, uh, we see those all through this era. And so we're going to go to another country in the next segment. So we thank you for coming. And again, we'll be going into another segment here shortly. And keep an eye out for us.